Hi guys, good evening and welcome. The rain is raining, the fire is burning, and the light is probably giving you a very pixeled image. I do apologise. Not into high technology on the video side here. <laughs> okay, I want to talk about cutting the crap. <laughs> did I say that? Yeah, I did. Okay, I want you to name drop. Drop the name. And in this case, drop the name Crohn's disease. Don't feel scared about it. Just drop it. Because in my understanding, just my thoughts, when you get given the name Crohn's disease, you have Crohn's disease, and you read up about it and you hear it's an incurable disease, well, that means you have it for life and that there's nothing out of it. And as someone pointed out to me the other day, that you are in remission when you don't have the symptoms of Crohn's. You're in remission. So you always have Crohn's. Okay. I want you to drop the name so you don't have Crohn's. Drop. Gone. How do you feel now, knowing that you don't have Crohn's disease? It's pretty damn good, right? What is the payoff believing that Crohn's disease is incurable? To me, none. To others, some. Because the pay payback or the payoff, if you like, is that you have you know, I, this becomes your identity. This is how I suffer. Um, now you've got to treat me in this way because I suffer with this and all of, the, all of that lot. I'm sure there'll be some people getting annoyed with me for saying that. Mate, don't because you'll just get yourself all feeling worse. I've been there, done it, got the t-shirt, read the flipping book, wrote the movie and the screenplay and I was exactly the same. Angry, reactive and all the rest of it and I was very, very sick as a result. So let's say the name doesn't exist anymore. Now look at the symptoms. Now look at what is actually going on inside your body. Start asking yourself questions. It is the answers that lie within the questions. You don't need the, the answers themselves. Just the questions like, what is, what is going on in the environment around my cells? You're a load of cells. You're not one thing. You're 50 to 75 trillion cells encased in your own little petri dish so when cells in a petri dish this is care of bruce lipton get sick you don't add chemicals to try and make the cells get better you take the cells out of the environment and you leave them for, for a couple of days or so apparently and the cells renew themselves they get better they multiply all the time they're multiplying so they can do this all by themselves. This is an amazing piece of equipment. I don't mean just mine. You know, all this that goes on in this body. So, at the same time, I'm not saying don't take drugs, don't have surgeries or anything. If you have a bowel that has been badly damaged by the ulceration and you need a bowel resection, then that's what your your body needs, apparently. If that's what is really, truly the case, then that's what you have to do. I've had that a few times now, and I'm still here to tell the tale. So it's obviously not preferable, but, you know, I guess that's just the way that, you know, things work out. So getting back to the name Crohn's, Crohn's is a name for symptoms. And let's be logical here. That's all it is. That's what the medical profession do. Scientists look at situations in the body and they give it a name to claim it. Oh yeah, I've just done a paper. I've named this disease. And sometimes they name it with the location, like ilium, and then they add the word inflammation in Latin because it sounds a lot better after it. So it's ileitis. There you go. Inflammation in the ileum. Ileitis. And then there's colitis and ulcerative colitis. And there's a few other itises. But with Crohn's disease, Dr. Burrell Crone in 1932, along with his other chap in New York, when they were deciding about well, what are we going to call 
this a long area, long, long area from mouth to rectum, and and even want to even start calling the skin um, when the skin gets ulceration, they want to call that Crohn's too. <laughs> oh dear gosh! Anyway, what are we going to call that? And and they decided we'll call it Crohn's after you, after your surname. So that's it's a name. Not belittling it for those who want to keep holding on to it. It's it's a name. All right. So when you have the identity that I have Crohn's disease and that it is an incurable disease, where is your hope? You can't have any. Sorry, it's incurable. We're going to help you manage it. And you'll go through remissions and you'll go through flare-ups and this is going to be your life. How does that make you feel? I don't think very good and I know that I've only got two choices here on this earth and that's to feel good or to feel bad so I choose to feel good I choose to say that Crohn's disease does not exist as an incurable disease for me so that's just the way it is and I feel damn good about that I feel really good about that and I had another comment. I did a 500 word piece for the ABC Open the other day and somebody put a, a comment underneath, great, a cure for Crohn's. No, that's not what I said. Because to say that you have a cure for Crohn's to somebody who believes that there is no cure for Crohn's and they are suffering, they're gonna feel very angry about it. And it's nothing, nothing that I'm wanting to say here is to belittle anybody or to make them wrong. It's not about that. It's just that how I feel now and where I have been and what has gone on in my body, it's such a different situation. There is no remission for me. I just don't have Crohn's disease. It's just a name anyway. But anyway, so there you go. That's my naming thing done. Yeah, just don't reduce yourself to a name. You're so much more. And if you really look at the environments, and, and there are three envir major environments, there's loads of environments, but three major environments. So trauma will affect the cells in your body. What you eat, drink, inhale, um, inject, um, Viruses that come to the body, bacteria that come to the body, but the body is a pretty amazing thing, can sort out a lot, a lot of things. That's the second environment. So be very mindful of, of, your, of how you eat. It's very important. And the third, the major, major, major environment is sits in between your ears. Because as you think, your brain listens to the commands or the, what you're responding to as you see this world and chemicals are released into the body and as a chemical is released into the body it has an effect on the cell and I'm just gonna say it one more time I'll probably say it again in other videos it's now a big buzzword everybody's talking about cortisol yeah at last thank goodness um, cortisol if held for long periods of time in the body at high levels causes inflammation why someone another comment I got that's ridiculous cortisol doesn't cause inflammation <laughs> what happens then well fight or flight hormone kicks in adrenaline pushes all the blood out of the viscerous system into your somatic you're in fight or flight mo mode so you remember cells can only do one of two things they can either be in growth or in protection when you're in fight or flight you're in protection you stop the growth factor. And another important point is the immune system shuts down. So while you're looking after yourself in the woods with the bear or the saber-toothed tiger or whatever's meant to be attacking you at the time, and say for instance you had an infection in your body that your immune system was sorting out, it doesn't. It stops because it puts all its energy into protecting you. Because that's the first, and f that's the animal instinct, the first and foremost thing. So that's a good thing for that period of time. But it 
it's your mind you need to be observing. Your mind is not who you are. I've said this so many times, but it's so true. And, and all these thoughts that have come into our mind of everything that's been done to us, everything that's been said to us, it doesn't disappear. My gosh. Oh, okay. Prime example. I don't know why I was feeling, maybe I was feeling tired and I felt like I should have been doing something or going somewhere or talking to another human being <laughs> or something. I don't know. But anyway, I got up and I walked past my piano. I haven't put my fingers on the keys for ages and I just, it was late. It was about 10.30, late-ish. So I sat down and I started playing uh, and I, I don't play very well. I used to play every day. I started playing since I was five, but I haven't practiced for ages. And then I just started playing notes and I just started feeling incredible and peaceful and awesome. So when you feel like doo-doo, stop it and work out ways to make yourself smile. Get back to who you truly are, you know, because anything negative has got nothing to do with you because you're perfect, whole and complete, remember? So, I think I better stop now. 12 minutes. Someone always told me to stay around the five minute mark, but I just can't for some reason. I was passionate today. I have got loads more, but I really don't want to hold you up. I just want to say that I wish the best for all of you. I want you all to know that you have a choice and that when you feel negative about stuff just accept it it is what it is feel the pain do something about it get the hot water bottle put it on your gut did that many a time it just dulls the pain and just be peaceful 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 do good things for other people might sound trite but funnily enough it's you're paying yourself back and the cells will love it because and your brain will start to think that the war zone has ended and the war zone has ended the only reason the war zone exists is because your mind is letting itself run riot and seeing this world how somebody else saw it before you and then taught you how to see this world see I get passionate <laughs> anyway I, I, I wish you all the best to all of you and I'm going to stop now I really really truly am and keep writing to me, go onto my website and start up a conversation, a comments, get some comments happening because it's, it's quite quiet there at the moment. And even though um, I've been having such wonderful responses from people who've read my books, it's, it's you know, being in connection with you that, that really matters, I think, and sharing good stories. Um, so, um, and one more to say that the lady I was sharing with in Canada who actually was on prednisolone, went into depression and had a psychotic episode, then they put her on psycho antipsychotic drugs and I was very fear fearful for her. Um, I heard from her and that was really good. So, except she sounded busy. Don't be busy. <laughs> Because when you're in busy, you're still in that fight or flight. Believe it or not, that's what being busy is all about. <gasps> got to do this, got to do that. Uh, 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 uh. Just, what have I got to do now? I'll do that and stay with the doing of the thing that you're doing. Done. Next one. Do that. Like laying the table. <coughs> got to go. Okay. <laughs>